It's here. I can't believe we've done it. It's been a long, long haul, but we finally got the video series of As It Occurs To Me, or some of the cooler kids are calling it Aotuna, Aotuna, ready for you. This is episode one, and it's free. But you can see a version of this episode that's about 20 minutes longer, plus all the other five episodes before they go out online, with also 20 minutes of extra material. If you subscribe at www.gofasterstrike.com slash A-R-I-O-T-M, 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 um, on that channel there's also some interviews, the behind the scenes extras, they'll, we'll be putting up bloopers and all sorts of things on there, so there's loads more material, plus all six long episodes that you can see in before your friends, um, and also with, you know, a, a good 20 minutes of material for every episode extra. Um, you can also see the long episodes, though not the other extras, by becoming a monthly badge subscriber at gofasterstripe.com slash a badges, gofasterstripe.com slash badges. Uh, if you don't want to see the longer channels but want to give us some money, you can just buy a badge there. You can be monthly or just a one-off payment or just a payment without a badge. You can also, at that gofasterstripe.com slash AIOTM page, buy t-shirts and tea towels and badges there as well and a couple of DVDs. All that money will help us recoup the losses and pay for future podcasts. Um, and, uh, yeah, just uh, if you want to buy maybe an emergency questions book, uh, which is obviously the other podcast I do, gofasterstrike.com slash EQ. That money will also help us make more podcasts. Um, but let's sit back and enjoy the very first episode of the video series, As It Occurs To Me. Hope you enjoy it. Yes, can I help you? Are you the actress, Emma Watson? What does the sign say, mate? Yeah, well, that doesn't mean that you are Emma Watson. Look at my hand, pal. What more proof do you need? Well, yes, it's very tiny, like I'd imagine Emma Watson's would be, but can I just have a little... No, it's obviously her. I mean me, Emma Watson. Come on, Harry, let's play Quindin. Do we see? Oh, well, yeah, it is the sort of thing Emma Watson might say, but she's a very successful actress. Why would she be giving £10 hand jobs from behind an old curtain? Do you want a hand job off Emma Watson or not? Yeah, all right, then go on. Money first. Oh, um. OK, off we go. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, oh Armani. Go on, Armani. Uh, hey, I'm only doing this if you're imagining me in the Half-Blood Prince films. Yes. I'm not catering for perverts here. Yes, all right, go on, go on. Don't stop, don't stop. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, no? What? No! Fucking hell, what we did it! Fucking hell, we did it! What? Sorry, mate, I've got to go. hundred grand, we bloody got it. I know the bloody idiots, I can't believe it. You thought I paid for a full hand job. Oh, you got most of one, isn't it? Block, there's your change. Get back here, Emma Watson, or I'll tell the whole world about your hand job scam. Hello, it's me, Tiny Andrew Collings. Oh, brilliant, we love him. He's our favourite. Stop saying that, you children down there. Anyway, <gasps> it's Tiny Richard Herring, everybody. What's that, Tiny Richard Herring? No, you can't do a podcast, you naughty boy. Get away, go on. This is my show. Now, children. Would you like to hear my amazing life story? I can't hear you. Would you like to hear my amazing life story? Yes, we would. Oh, good. Because I can't wait to tell you. Aside, I can wait to tell you. I can't think of anything I'd less like to do. Emma Watson? Oh. We're back. What? They want us to do more. Oh, well, that's wonderful news. Aside, it's not. It's terrible news. Should I, should I bring the puppet? No. Tiny Andrew Collins isn't in this anymore. No! Aside, yes. 
You cursed brat! Look what you've done! I'm melting! I'm melting! Who'd have thought a man with girl-sized hands could destroy my wickedness? I can't get rid of him, he was the best thing in it! Stop saying that, you people over there! Let's go, Dan. It's on your sleeve. Nothing. Hello, uh, can I get some cider for Claire Balding? Emma, Emma, oh, Emma, no. They, oh, Emma no. they want us back. What, really? Yeah, more Aotama. Aotama! Mm. The thing is, I'm, I'm sort of happier hanging out here with my uh, celebrity friends and... Um, is, that, is that Mel and Sue? Yeah, off, off of the Bake Off. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Matthew Pinson. The Brower guy. Uh, Olympian, oh, won yeah. a couple of golds. Um, but the thing is, is that I'm, I'm sort of happier doing things that are on the proper television and you get paid millions for, you know, I mean, I've just been asked to replace Johnny Vaughan and do the new breakfast biscuit ad, you know. What next? Marmalade for lunch. The thing is, Em, none of those people are your real friends, not like me and Dan. I haven't seen you in five years. And writing screenplays, doing comedy drama, that's not work to be proud of, is it? It's not like pretending to be the anus of a relative of a future queen. Come on, Em, you know you want to come. Come on, let's go. Come on. Well, I, I, I don't. I, I just want to stay here with my celebrity friends. Look, I mean, there's Alison Moyer and eat sausages. Emma, if you don't come with us right now, I'm going to tell the world and every single one of your celebrity friends, even Riz Latif, the truth. I'm going to tell them every single poo anecdote you told on A. Artema is about yourself. You cock juggling tanta cunt. <laughs> Come on then, let's go. All we need to do is find Chrissy and I wonder where he'll be. Oh well, it's Monday evening, isn't it? As it occurs to me, as it occurs to me, as it occurs to me. Please welcome the man in occurred to Mr. Richard Herring. <laughs> Hello. I just want to be on the telly. It counts. It counts. Hello. And welcome to a brand new series of As It Occurs To Me. I was down at the offices of Ask Jeeves uh, earlier in the week. Um, <laughs> they've got like a fridge there with Quattro drinks in there for free. You can just have one whenever you want. All the people who worked it there called it A.A. Ottoma, so I don't know if that's... <laughs> so, uh, read it. I said I'd never do this again. If I remember correctly, uh, the future me came from 2050 to warn me to never do this again. But I hate the future me. He's a dick, not like the me now. He's very right-wing. I'm not going to listen... <laughs> not going to listen to him, so I've decided to do this. And thanks to some lovely men who work in IT and have no life, who have kick-sided this for us. <laughs> We are back. People, uh, for example, a man uh, apparently called Huge Appendage. Uh, he, uh, if that is his real name, he, he paid £175 to have me call him a fucking idiot on the... Huge Appendage, you are a fucking idiot. That isn't even your real name. You've paid £175 for a man to call you an idiot and it's not even you. I mean, that's not fair. It might be his real name. This could definitely have happened. As it occurs to me, this could definitely have happened. Well, I've finally managed it. I've managed to push a tiny human being out of my clack a lack a dack dack A um, little bit sore. That doesn't matter now. Uh, what should we call him? Simon? Ian? Well, uh, let's not be hasty, wife. Uh... <laughs> we in the Jupendage family have to be very careful. <laughs> Because Jupendage is such an unusual surname. Yes, yes, it is unusual, isn't it? Almost to the point of not seeming real. Yeah. <laughs> there are certainly very few people with the surname Jupendage, mm. so we do have to keep an eye out for names that could accidentally create a double entendre, thus mm. haunting our child for their whole life. Yes. Should we call him Hugh? Mm. Hugh Jupendage. <laughs> well, it was his grandfather's name. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> His great-grandfather's name and his great-great-grandfather's name. Mm. And, and it's your name. It's too. my name as well, yes. <laughs> Huge appendage, yes, that seems fine. Well, it was uh, lucky we were on the lookout for <laughs> funny names, wasn't yeah. it? Yes, yeah, lucky yes. he didn't take my maiden name, Jacob Juggling Thundercunt. <laughs> your, your maiden name is Jacob Juggling Thundercunt? 
Yeah, you must remember, you know, from the wedding ceremony. Oh, yes, because that does sound like cock juggling thundercunt, doesn't it? No, but it's cock juggling thundercunt. Right, yes. uh, but none of my family, you know, we took great care not to call anyone Hugh, because otherwise they'd be Hugh Jacock juggling thundercunt. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> you really would be bullied yeah. then, wouldn't you? Yes. yes. Thanks, huge appendage, for giving us that money. I love you for your stupid donation more than I love my own child. Your generosity paid for this high-backed armchair. It didn't pay for the semicircular toilet mat. That was an extra £10. Uh, but uh, it's... Uh, thanks, sir. I, I don't think this is a very good... It's not high enough, is it? I don't think. For, it's disappointingly low. Whoever bought this is going to be sacked. I'm having the... The next time there's going to be a higher backed armchair, I can promise you that. But uh, thanks also to the people here in the front row uh, who you uh, paid for extra luxury seats. Uh, so that's very nice. You're going to get to be served, and if you wish, brought to orgasm by the cast of tonight's show. Will you please welcome the Ayatama team? It's TV's Emma Kennedy, Dan Tetzel, and on the guitar, Christian Riley. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Look, you've got your own desk. It's like that's life, isn't it? Yeah. Look, look, my penis looks like a vegetable. Look at this. <laughs> there it is. Oh. Look, that's my... <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look at that, Emma. Look, did, did, did your... <laughs> Does your semen taste a bit aniseedy? It, it is a little bit aniseedy, but I've got more yeah. cocks. I'm, I'm the first in the line of the it, more it, cocks. It, it, it's apt, actually, because it goes very well with pork. <laughs> that's, that's true. I'll just put that away. That's fine. But it's exciting to be back, isn't it? Yeah. What are you going to do with your £100,000? Emma, <laughs> Emma, it's not my £100,000. People on Kickstarter, they gave us that for A. Ottoman. So, uh, obviously... <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So, obviously, we're going to split that four ways. So, uh, here we go. Wow. Uh, here we go. This uh, got these uh, all sorted out. That one's oh. for. Uh, oh, lovely! Thank you. There's oh, your twenty-five thank you grand, very much. Twenty-five uh, that's grand. For, that's for you, Emma. Well oh, done. Congratulations. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you um, so much. That's for you, Christian. And there's my twenty-five grand. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Thank you. It's from uh, from the Sky Potato Bank. Uh, so Ian Kickstart himself has signed that. So that is how valid. What are you going to do with your 25k, Dan? How's that going to work out for you? Oh, I'm probably going to. I think I'm going to cash it, and yeah. then I'm going to buy a frame, and then frame the money because I won't have the check anymore, oh. so it won't really work out for me. <laughs> Fair but. enough. Uh, Emma, what are, you, what are your plans? Uh, I'm going to spend it all on prostitutes and cocaines. Fair enough. <laughs> what about you, Christian? What, what are you planning to do? I'm going to plough all of this back into the Kickstarter for season two of AI. Oh, such a <laughs> suck up. <laughs> Such oh, a sucker! Oh. The irony is, uh, I mean, that's obviously a joke, but these novelty checks cost us £255 to make. So that is, <laughs> I hope, I hope you feel that joke. <laughs> I feel that joke was worth it. Um, that's the money dealt with. Let's go on with resurrecting something that would have been much better for the world had it remained dead and forgotten. As it occurs to me, it's exactly like Jesus. So, I just got back from being on holiday. Me and my wife went to the top tourist attraction uh, in the whole of the USA. Uh, we went to Warsaw, Indiana. Yeah. Oh, you, you must know, it. it's the World Center for Orthopedic Implants. That is, uh, that's why we went there. We went there to see her family, but it was quite interesting to go to somewhere a bit off the beaten track, see the real America. We went out to explore on day one. The very first thing we came across in this town in the center of Indiana was, was this shop, uh, which... If you look at it, if you didn't look, know what the title was, it looks like it might sell some a adult products. There are no kind of windows there, really, for you to look in, which is odd for a shop. Or it might be the kind of place you would go in to get tied up and butt-fucked in Pulp Fiction. But uh, <laughs> it's right in a parking lot on own. You'll see it's called Bibles and Books, which is interesting. And it either means that it was once just selling Bibles. They thought, well, it's the best-selling book in the world. We can get away with... So then they realised everyone had one. They thought, oh, no, we're going to have to sell some other bu books as well, grudgingly, so it's Bibles and books. Or they don't consider the Bible to be a book. So that is... That's slightly odd. A little bit further along uh, the road, we saw something a bit weirder. Uh, it was this uh, children's playground <laughs> in a school. You can see covered in tiny white crosses, which it was hard to understand what the hell was going on there, but uh, it didn't seem an appropriate place to have a cemetery in a school playground, but... There were banners explaining exactly what was going on uh, there. The, uh, each of those crosses uh, represented four abortions that had been carried out in the county since 1982. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, some abortion fans in there. I don't know, maybe, uh, and okay, it's hard to tell, is it maybe against abortion? I mean, that is, that's quite something, isn't it, to have, to have that in a school. They take them down during term time, but, you know, people must drive past where their kids go, why are there lots of crosses there? But personally, I feel that half filling a playground with crosses for such a cause is tactless and a little bit distasteful, but America has freedom of speech and also freedom of putting out tiny fetus crosses, so there's, you're not allowed to complain about it. Also, everyone in, in Indiana has a gun, so... It's best just to wait until you're safely back at home before <laughs> you start being sarcastic about them. You know, what are you going to do now? You're too far away. Your bullets won't get that far, Indiana. I don't care. Uh, but uh, I couldn't help wondering if, they, if you're going to make a graveyard uh, to fetuses uh, in a school playing field, then why make each cross represent four aborted children? Give them a cross each, Warsaw. Come on, that's... That smacks of laziness to me, don't you think? That's... It seems you're pro-life, but not to the extent that you're prepared to put out 400 crosses when 100 crosses will do. Uh, consequently, to the casual observer, it just looks like there haven't been that many abortions in this county in the last 35 years. Also, if they call themselves religious, why just a cross for each abortion? Uh, I'd like to see a marker for every single sperm that has failed to make a child <laughs> in that county since 1982. Given there are up to 600 million sperm in every ejaculation, even just think how many crosses you'd have to put up just for the last week. I mean, it beggars... <laughs> Belief, doesn't it? Especially if onanistic anti anti abortion men decided to stage their own protest. Jesus Christ, Peggy, we're going to need 600 million more crosses. <laughs> Make that 700 million. <sighs> Jesus, you <laughs> doing it again? Yeah, luckily for me, I am aroused by sanctimonious Catholics and their disgusting displays of prejudice. <laughs> I love putting up crosses so it's a perfect symbiotic relationship. <laughs> I mean, it's weird. I mean, you know, that, would, that, that would be inappropriate to put in a, in a school playground, though, right? So that, that could never happen. But uh, Warsaw isn't just full of religious nut jobs, wanking men, and Trumpkin supporters. Uh, the, the town centre has a really cool art display up there uh, with 20 lifelike statues by Seward Johnson. Uh, that they're of Indiana people going about their daily business, so uh, they're, they're quite impressive. I'll show you some examples. There's uh, this one. There's a guy, just uh, an ordinary-looking guy with his dog, uh, trying to play fetch with him. There's this one, which is slightly strange. I, I, th I think... I'm um, <laughs> not sure what's going on there. I think it's... Um, I think it's, he's helping her with uh, brush the rabbit. I think that's what's going on. <laughs> It's called, that one's called Bunnies Don't Bite, which... <laughs> it's a lie, bunnies do bite, so even on a... Uh, she's trying to trick him. Uh, there's this nice one of a girl playing with a little hoop, but it's sort of odd gold-faced child that you might see in one of the worst Stephen Moffat-era Doctor Who. <laughs> That's going to come alive at night and, uh, and haunt the... But they're all of everyday uh, things happening in Indiana, except for this one, which is slightly odder, of a... Uh, um, a modern-day man meeting Abraham Lincoln, which is... which seems like an odd uh, scenario. Uh, it's, a, it's sort of supernatural, a bit out of kilter with the other 19 statues, but Abe is holding out his hat there, you can see, and it seems to me like the man is fixated on the hat. He's not... he's not looking at Abraham Lincoln at all. He's just... It's, it's, for him, the hat is the remarkable part of this scenario. Yeah, mate, it's a weird old-time hat, but that's Abraham Lincoln. He's travelled through time or come back to life or something. He's probably got something to say. Stop looking at his hat. Make the most of it. You don't know what, how long this incredible spectral visit's going to last. Ask him some questions. Show him around. If you delay, you might not get to show the zombie president. To, you might not get to take him to the lazy field of abortion memorial. So come on. It's me again. It's me again. It's you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Preparing. <laughs> Man, I love living in Warsaw, Indiana. <laughs> Hello, future human. It is I, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Wow, you are much shorter than I imagined. No, no, I'm very, very tall. Uh, back in the day, everyone was terribly short, so by the standards of then, I am exceedingly tall. I'm very, very tall. Also, you appear to be Welsh. No. <laughs> Anywho, I haven't got much time. I come with a message for the people of 
the 21st century. Wow, look, look at that old-timey hat. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's a nice hat, but hey, come! We're <laughs> I, I can't believe people used to wear hats like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't really come because of the hat, so I've got a message for the people. Can I, uh, <laughs> can I, can I try it on? Can I? No, look, the magic that brought me here lasts but seconds. Yeah, I'm not going to listen to your message unless I can try the hat on. Oh, all right, but you know, you must listen. Okay. Ooh, look at me. I'm Abraham Lincoln. You're free and no, you're no, free and you're all no. free. <laughs> you're not Abraham Lincoln. I am literally Abraham Lincoln. You're fixated on the wrong thing. Oh, oh no. My time is up. Oh, it's fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. oh, Don, I wish I'd got a selfie. My wife will never believe me about that hat. <laughs> As it occurs to me. Now, it's over to Christian Riley on his podium. £32 of your Kickstarter money went on, on that. I hope you're pleased with that. For this month's song, Christian Riley, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to do a love song, and uh, you know, because there's been a lot of hate and excrement in the show so far, so I'm going to wash it all clean with a love song. And I'm, I'm writing this love song. It's a work in progress. It's for my girlfriend, and uh, I need to try it out on somebody. And I'm going to try it out on you, if that's all right, in the front row, in the luxury seat there, madam. Um, all you've got to do is look at me. We're just going to see how these lines work yeah so just just relax okay right. uh, and say your name nice and loud so we can all hear Hi. jennifer brilliant great <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I should say, my girlfriend is, like, really political, and so it's really hard to make that sexy, so I'm just work with me. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Hey, girl, are you global warming? Because not everybody believes in you, but I do. Hey, girl, are you the polar ice caps? Because the scientific consensus is you're alarmingly hot right now. <laughs> hey, girl, are you petrol prices? Because I love it when you go down. <laughs> hey, girl, are you a library book on how to write a catchy chorus? Because I wish I'd taken you out last night. Hey, girl, are you a grassy knoll on the day of the 1963 Kennedy assassination? Because you're smoking. Come on, that's fucking gold. It's definitely bronze. All right. Hey, girl, are you the Nazi Holocaust? Because every conversation I have on the internet seems to lead to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Watch and learn, fellas. <laughs> Do the opposite. <laughs> hey, girl, are you the Israel-Palestine conflict? <laughs> because people keep saying you're complicated when we both know that's bullshit. <laughs> Somebody just needs to pull out. <laughs> hey, girl, are you a software update? Because I want you so bad, I'm going to agree to all your terms and conditions without knowing what the fuck they are. <laughs> hey, girl. Are you a guitar solo? Fucking awesome. <laughs> hey girl, are you the new Ghostbusters film? Because I'm willing to overlook all your flaws in the name of feminism. <laughs> hey girl, are 
Are you a gluten intolerant? Because if I had you, I'd tell everybody even though they didn't give a fuck. <laughs> hey, girl. Are you an audience in the Leicester Square Theatre? Because I wouldn't mind if you gave me the clap. Christian Riley, ladies and gentlemen, Christian Riley. We've had to record this show months in advance, which is a problem for us because it means we can't do the hard-hitting topical political satire that this made this show famous, really. What, like bad impressions of Tam DL? Oh, where's my bookies? And, <laughs> and sketches about King Herod, who, um... I, honestly, I can't remember what he did. It was something about Slovenia, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it, was yeah. Slovenia. it was wherever it... Shut up! But luckily it doesn't matter, because there's one thing we can guarantee will be in the news the week that you are watching this. Wherever you are in the world, whatever's happened, there will have been a terrible shooting spree in America. So, uh, <laughs> you know it's just happened. Call me Nostradamus, we'll yeah, never forget. you wish, you wish. <laughs> <laughs> and, as much as I wish to express my sympathy to the as-yet-not-dead victims of that <laughs> shooting spree, and their families, who, as I speak, are unaware that their loved ones are soon not going to be with them. <laughs> I've come up with this great sketch about this terrible problem. I hope you will enjoy it. As it occurs to me... That's your love gun. I lo that is a lovely gun you, you got go. there. I, I love the fact that guns are freely available to everyone, including the mentally ill and terrorists, and that is in no way insane. You are dead right about that. Yes. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> humans. It is I, Abraham Lincoln. Hold, hold on, are you, are you Welsh? No, accents hadn't settled down much in the olden days, so no one... Hey, hey, Terry. <laughs> Look at the hat. <laughs> That's <laughs> Look at the hat. Just, just forget about the hat. I've come to talk about gun control. Come, come on, give me the hat. That's an amazing give hat. It's a really cool no, hat. No, give me the hat. No. <laughs> 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 Look at me, I'm a magician. <laughs> oh, come, on. <laughs> come on, at least pretend to be me. Come on. Who are you? I'm Abraham Lincoln. I'm literally Abraham Lincoln. That is the most amazing thing. It's not just about the hat. It's a good hat, though. I've come to warn you that we never anticipated how terrible guns would become. Oh, that's quite ironic, given you're Abraham Lincoln and what happened to you. <laughs> Why? Well, you know. <laughs> no, well, tell me. Oh, no! Oh, my time is up! What? <laughs> you know, you got shot in the head in the theatre. Oh. oh, dang, she took the hat. We could have used that for target practice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, it's about this time that uh, I like to settle down and suck on a nice vocal zone pasty. Mmm. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, it's nice to know in my profession, you know, that if I get a sore throat, I can always rely on vocal zone to settle that sore throat and fast. I thought we were gun nuts. Why, why, why do you get a sore throat doing that? Mm, you, uh, do you want a vocal zone? They're not exactly delicious, but they do solve the problem. All right, yeah, all right. Mm. Why not? Ah, oh, um, yeah, they, they don't taste that nice, mm. but they, they, mm. they seem to be working. That's what I... Yeah. Mmm, vocal zone. <laughs> should we, um, should we get on with the show? No, we have to finish the vocal mm, zone. <laughs> quite hard, they're quite difficult to hear. Yeah. Don't, you mustn't chew I'm them. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I just tried to swallow it, but it wasn't. That was quite hard. That's too... <laughs> I got it, yeah, it's right. As it occurs to me, as it occurs to me.
Well, that was odd, wasn't it? So, um, well, the main thing that's happened to me, of course, in the last uh, five years is that I've had this baby. No, really? Yeah. Really? Why haven't you told anyone? Well, I'm a very private person, I keep telling you. So, uh, my daughter loves a, uh, an internet channel uh, called Little Baby Bum. Don't Google it, you'll get into trouble if that's in your search history. It's, um, it's actually quite charming. It's like, uh, it's like cartoons of nursery rhymes, but I have to watch them with her all the time. So it means I've seen these nursery rhymes over and over again. I know how to write a successful nursery rhyme. That is uh, the only benefit of this. Basically, the format for writing a nursery rhyme is to come up with five little things, then have them gradually deplete down to no little things. That is, that's the basic formula. That's all you need to know. The one my daughter really likes is uh, five little monkeys jumping on the bed. Uh, I don't know if you know this one. It goes, five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mother calls the doctor and the doctor said, no more jumping on the bed, which is immediately pretty bleak, isn't it? for a trained medical professional to turn up, assess the situation, not even attempt basic resuscitation, <laughs> just to say, yep, that monkey's dead, bad luck, that's... Uh, uh, don't let the others jump on the bed, that's all I've got for you, there's nothing... This one, again, the mother doesn't learn from what's just happened, they, uh, day by day, another monkey falls off and dies. At the end of the week, there's just a bed in the jungle surrounded by the twisted cadavers <laughs> of five dead children monkeys in various states of decay. Um, Luckily, I found another cartoon internet channel which does nursery rhymes, which is a bit more realistic. It's called Tiny Baby Anus. Uh, <laughs> they cover this song a lot more realistically, I think. Five little monkeys jumping on a bed One fell off and bumped his head Mother called the doctor and the doctor said No more jumping on the bed Four little monkeys jumping on a bed One fell off and bumped her head Mother called the doctor and the doctor said do you not remember what happened yesterday? Uh, all your monkey children were jumping on the bed. One of them fell off and died. You called me. There was nothing I could do. I mean, it, the child was dead. I didn't know what to say, but I thought I should say something, so I just said, no more jumping on the bed. I mean, I hardly thought it needed saying, to be honest. It was pretty obvious, given the circumstances. But clearly it did need saying, because now the exact same thing has happened and 40% of your monkey children are dead. I suspect you're suffering from grief and not thinking straight, but please listen to me when I say this time, do not let your remaining monkey children jump on the bed. It's as simple as that. Three little monkeys jumping on a bed One fell off and bumped his head Mother called the doctor and the doctor said Monkey Jesus Christ, what is going on here? This is the third day in a row this has happened. You keep calling me, I keep telling you how to stop this happening, but you're ignoring me. Listen to me, don't let your children jump on the bed. I don't even know why you've got a bed, you're a monkey. Get rid of the bed. Shit, look, the other two monkeys are still jumping on it now, even though I've told you not to let them. Please, you've only got two monkey children left. Promise me you'll listen this time. Don't let those monkeys jump on the bed. Have you, have you got it? You promise, don't let those two monkeys near the bed. And certainly don't let them on the bed. And if they get on the bed, don't let the two monkeys jump on the bed. Two little monkeys jumping on a bed. One fell off and bumped her head. Mother called the doctor and the doctor said... For fuck's sake, what is wrong with you? Why would you keep doing this? And then ring me up to tell me about it, even though I've told you how to make it stop. I mean, I know you're a monkey and you're not the cleverest animal in the jungle, but I'm a monkey and I became a doctor. Four years in medical school. I went to human medical school, so you can imagine the other students, they mocked me. Ooh, ooh, I'm a monkey doctor. Ooh, do you want a banana? That's my stethoscope. They didn't think I could qualify, but I showed them. I became a doctor. I'm not a very good doctor. I don't know how to save monkey children that have fallen a relatively small distance, but I know how to make it stop. Don't let this last monkey jump on the bed. Little monkey jumping on a bed He fell off and bumped his head Mother called the doctor and the doctor said 
That's it. I'm washing my hands of this. This is natural selection in process. I'm glad all your monkey children are dead. It means none of them will reach adulthood and parent their own stupid children who can't even fall off a bed properly. This might be seen as neglect by some, but I think it's cold-blooded murder. I've called the authorities. Come in, boys. They're going to take you to monkey prison. And once you're there, I'm going to have you sent to the monkey prison hospital where you'll be sterilised so this can never happen again. Now, as you know, uh, I'm a very big fan of the TV show Humans and uh, the actor Gemma Chan, who's in that. Uh, I'd be delighted to see that a second series of that is just coming out. Uh, though it's not so good news, it's caused a bit of tension for me and my wife. How could you? I don't see the problem. Oh, really? Really? There's no problem here at all, is there? No, you, you always said I'd fuck anything. I don't get it. Why is he in trouble? What? Oh, so I suppose you think. Why is his wife upset with him? He's just had sex with a robot. So what? So what? He cheated on her. No, he didn't. He had sex with a robot. Just because it looks like a person, it isn't a person. I don't think that's the issue. He's had sex outside marriage. No, he hasn't. He's ejaculated into a machine. It's an elaborate wank. An elaborate wank? Yeah, it's a fantasy, isn't it? That's not forbidden in the marriage vows. You can imprison my body, but you cannot imprison my mind. Marriage is a prison? A wonderful prison. He's only human, isn't he? That robot is ridiculously and dangerously attractive. I don't care who you are, male or female, straight or gay. If you had that robot in your house and knew you could activate its sexual functions two hours, you'd be up to her nuts. Because it's, it's a robot. Yeah, I got it. Listen, if you were to have sex with a robot that looks exactly like the actress Gemma Chan, I wouldn't mind at all. I'd be right there with you every step of the journey, helping you out. You wouldn't be allowed to watch. Nor would I want to. You having sex with a robot that looks exactly like the actress Gemma Chan, that's your fantasy. It really isn't. Not mine. And in turn, if I was having sex with a robot that looks exactly like the actress Gemma Chan, you would understand as well. I wouldn't be. I'd divorce you. You can't divorce me. It's just a fantasy. It's like if I were to ever use online pornography. If you were ever to use it, yeah. Yeah, if that were to happen, then you wouldn't think I was cheating on you. No, I don't mind it. Exactly. And I'm sure you've got a sex toy stashed away somewhere. I don't. You've probably got a vibrator. I don't have one. That is a robot penis. I'm not going to burst in on you and go, oh, no, what's happening? Kate is having sex with a robot. Like, I'm going to have to divorce her. You'd think I was insane. No, because I don't have a vibrator. Actually, a vibrator is more offensive than a sex robot because it's like you've gone, no, mate, it's all right, no, fine. You can just chuck the rest of the robot away. I just need this. I mean... Don't get me wrong, done an amazing job. It's so intricate, so detailed, but just chuck it in a big burning bin because this is all I need. I mean, ideally, darling, if I could, I'd cut your cock off and throw the rest of you away, but I can't do that because it's against the law, so I'll just use this. All right. I don't have a vibrator. It's like if you came home and found me in the car with one of those plug into the cigarette lighter, lorry driver friend electric vaginas you can get. I've heard. I'd be disappointed. Sure. I'd be like, why are you doing that in the car? The neighbours will see. It's very specifically got a cigarette lighter attachment. I don't have one of those in the house, so... All right, well, can't you get an adapter or something? I don't think they do adapters that way round. They use a car thing in the house. It was very much for a, for a car, so I've got to do it. I'd have to build a dashboard of a car in the house. I think that would be odd. Can you stop using that while you're talking to me? Would you divorce me, though? Yeah, I think I would. No, you wouldn't, because it's a machine, it's not a person. What if you came home and found me in the kitchen, up to my plums in the toaster? I'd be so confused. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. I'd say, I want a new toaster. Fair enough. Also, shouldn't that thing be turned on? No. Do it properly or not at all. Ooh. But you wouldn't divorce me because it's the same as the electric vagina and the vibrator. But that isn't the same as a robot, though. It is. That's what a robot is, basically. Just a load of toasters stuck together. No, it isn't.
that's pretty much the end uh, of the show there. Uh, sorry if it was a bit ropey, but, you know, we're just starting out. I'm sure we'll get there in the end. Thanks to the cast uh, for their hard work. Thank you to the luxury ticket buyers. You've been wonderful. Uh, thank you to everyone who donated to the Kickstarter. <laughs> Hello, future human. It is I, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, my God. I can't believe the hat. It's amazing. I can't believe it. No, just forget about the hat. I am Abraham Lincoln. No, I know I said I wouldn't do this, but that hat is just uh, bizarre. It's amazing. It's so big and old-timey. It's just awesome. But more awesome than a time-travelling president. Yeah, it's great. Let me, go. Let me have a go. Uh, four score years and seven. Our fathers brought forth into the continent a new nation conceived in liberty and <laughs> dedicated to the proposition that all men are born equal. That's what you say, isn't it? That's your catchphrase. That's, uh, I bet everyone's always coming up to you and, and saying that, aren't they? Because I, I, I shouldn't really do this because I get the same because people are always coming up to me and say, I sure love motorcycling, motorcycling around. <laughs> Some people like cycling on a normal bike, not me. I say, why pedal around when you can go on a bike that doesn't need pedals with all the engine and stuff ram ram so it's i know how annoying it can be but i bet that's what people say to you and i bet they come up to you and say four score years and seven years ago our fathers brought forth in this continent a new nation conceived in liberty uh, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal go on say it go on say your catchphrase say the catchphrase it's good do it just give me the hat and look, that's, that hat is really big. You know, if you're ever sitting in a theatre, don't wear that, because the people behind you won't be able to see. I think someone will take a pop at you, so... Uh... See you next time, viewers! Whoa! It <laughs> Bye! Thank you. Thank you very much. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>